In this video, we'll create multiple extrusions from the same sketch, and this allows you to actually create your entire profile. So the entire profile here that we see except for the connecting rod sketch is produced in a single sketch. So if I take a look at that sketch, we can see that we have different profiles, and we're going to use them for separate extrusions. So the first thing we'll do is create a new part. And then I'll go ahead and draw up a sketch on the top plane. And we'll start by drawing in a center line, horizontal to the origin. Then I'm going to make the center line and the origin have a midpoint relation. And then I'm going to place several circles on both sides of the line. And then we'll go ahead and give this dimensions. So the first circle will be one and a quarter. And this inside circle will have a diameter of 0.8 inches. And on the other side, this will have a diameter of 2.2 inches. And the inside circle will have a diameter of 1.6. From there, I'm going to go ahead and give this center line a length of 6 inches. And then we're going to draw in a line from one circle to the other. And we want these two to be tangent. And because they're a different size, the only point we don't want to click here is one of these quarter points, because that'll make it coincident to that quarter of the circle. So if I click anywhere else on the circle, and draw out a line to the other circle here. I just want to make sure that that tangent relation shows up on the right. And I'll go ahead and control select the line and this circle and make these two tangent. And if you didn't have the tangent relation come in on the other side, you can do the same by control selecting the line here and the outside circle as well. From here we want to create the inside profile for the cutout that we're going to have and we'll do that using the offset entities. I'm going to go ahead and set the dimension to a quarter of an inch and then I'll select out that line, the circle, and this circle here. And this is on the correct side, so I'll go ahead and just click in the workspace and add that in. Now, normally with the offset entities, you can drag out points on a line. So this side we're, we're able to drag out here. And this side we're not able to drag out, so we're just going to use a trim to finish off this profile. So I'll go ahead and drag this point out and control select this circle and I'm going to make that coincident and then we'll come into the trim entities and choose the trim to closest and I'll go ahead and select out all the entities that we want to remove And once I have those selected, I'll go ahead and click OK. And we're going to add in several fillets. So I'll choose the Sketch Fillet tool, set this to a quarter of an inch, and select out these corners. And lastly, to finish up our sketch, I'm going to go ahead and mirror over the inside lines as well as this outside line to the other side. So we'll choose the mirror entities, choose out the top line and each one of these inside lines. And then for the mirror about, 
we'll choose the center line and we're just going to go ahead and leave that copy option checked and click OK. From here I can go ahead and exit the sketch and we can create our extrusion. Now when I choose the extrude tool and then I choose the sketch, SolidWorks is automatically going to look for open profiles or closed profiles. In this case it sees multiple profiles to work with, so it automatically brings you into this selected contour box. If I delete out that line that I first selected, I can go ahead and choose out the two regions of those circles. And I can see it's using a thin feature, which we don't want in this case. So we can go ahead and remove that out. Lastly, for this extrusion, I'm going to go ahead and set the end condition to mid-plane. And we're going to set this to a depth of 1 inch. And exit the extrusion. Now we want to go ahead and reuse that sketch. We'll click on it and go to show so we can see it. And that selected contours option can also be accessed before we go into the extruded feature. And that can be done by right clicking, coming down, and choosing the contour select tool. So in this case I'll just choose this outside line and that'll allow me to select this region and then we can go into Extruded Boss Space and it will automatically populate that region into the Selected Contours box. You'll also notice that there's a Feature Scope. You can have this merge with all of the bodies or just with selected bodies. In this case it's going to auto-select both cylinders there so we don't have to change this. We're once again going to use a mid-plane end condition and choose a half inch as the depth. And then I'll go ahead and exit the extrusion. Now from here, we had a pocket on each side with this profile. So we could do an extrusion from the inside. But I'm going to go ahead and come back into the Boss Extrude 2 and choose out this region as well and then we're going to use this profile to create a cut on the top. So once again I'll right click and come into the contour select tool and choose out that contour and I'm going to come into extruded cut. Looks like it's chosen the proper contour there and now we actually want to cut from the top surface so we're going to change the From option in the Cut Extrude. And we're going to change this to From a Surface Face or Plane. And just choose that top face. For the depth, I'm going to choose 0.1 inches. And I'll go ahead and click OK. That creates our cutout on one side. Now I can go ahead and click on the sketch and hide it away. And we just want to mirror over this pocket to the other side. Since we did do a mid-plane extrusion, we could just go ahead and use the top plane. But let's say that we didn't model it this way and that it's a little bit offset from any of our standard planes there. We can just come into the reference geometries, choose the plane option. And then we can go ahead and select the two sides, or the two opposite faces there. And by default, that's going to choose the mid-plane option for the reference geometry there. So we can go ahead and click OK. And now we have our mirror plane. Next, I'll come into the mirror tool, choose our plane 1 there as the mirror face. And I'll choose the cutout pocket as the feature to mirror. 
And if we choose the geometry pattern option, this option would ignore any end conditions or starting conditions and just try to create the geometry on the other side. And that'll complete our mirror. If I did, however, go back in and edit the feature and uncheck that geometry pattern option, it's going to try to not only copy the cut extrude, but copy any from or end conditions that we used. So if I click OK, you'll see that that mirror no longer completes. You see that we have an error. And the reason for this is that we used a from uh, starting condition for the cutout. And so it's looking for that same face to start the cut on the other side. So it's not going to be able to do that. And so we're going to have to use that geometry pattern option to complete the mirror. I can go ahead and hide out that plane. And the last thing we'll do here is add in a cutout for some sketched text. So I'll go ahead and create a sketch on this cutout face. And then we're going to go ahead and draw in a center line. And I'm going to just draw in two. First, I'm going to go normal to this sketch by doing the space bar normal to. And I'm also going to draw a center line across from center to center there. Then I'm going to go ahead and make this center line and this center line parallel. And the reason I did that is the sketch text is going to sit on top of the line that I choose. And if I did it here, our sketch text would be a little bit above the center. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension this off, let's say by 0.1 inches. And we should be able to get our sketch text roughly centered. So when I go into the sketch text option, the first selection is curves. It wants me to select either a curve or an edge to add the text on. And then I can go ahead and type it in to this box. I can also change the size of this if I uncheck the Use Document font. I can come in and increase this to, let's say, a height of 0.2 inches. And that'll get it centered along that line. You also have options of flipping the text as well as the direction there and choosing how to orient it. We could also change the spacing. And we can go ahead and exit. And if you, depending on the options you choose, if you drag out these lines, it'll go ahead and move the text there. And if you bring in the end of this center line past uh, certain letters, it'll go ahead and remove those out or won't display them. So we'll stretch this out a little bit to make it roughly centered and then exit the sketch. Lastly, I'll just come into the extruded cut and choose this sketch. And we'll choose to extrude this to a depth of 0 0.05 inches. And there we have our completed connecting rod.